Mike comes in with an SSD question, and if there's anything I've covered before, it's SSDs. Over on our main channel, you will see a whole bunch of SSD comparisons, including in 2023, I published a six part history of SSD series, which was mostly me talking about my various random experiences going through all of the SSDs we've tested, yep. well over 100 different SSDs, not detailed specs and benchmarks so much, but just general thoughts about the various iterations of SSDs starting yep. way back in the early days through 2023. But Mike's question is... Mike, thank you. He said, years ago on an M.2 SSD, there was a big debate about QLC versus TLC, and QLC was characterized as poor quality. Some of these drives now have five-year warranties, and no one seems to talk about these differences anymore. Buy Windows 10 Professional for $15, activate instantly online with Microsoft, and keep it forever. Don't pay full price. Get the best deal from our sponsor, URCD Keys, using our link in the video description below. Full details on how this amazing deal works at the end of the video. I have never used the warranty on an SSD, and unless it was brand new, I probably would never bother, because by the time five years passes, it's not worth anything. Um... Five years ago, I was putting 250 gig SSDs that at the time were hundreds of dollars yep. into builds. Today, a 250 gig SSD is worth maybe a foot long sub at Subway. Maybe. Not, I mean, you would, I would just throw it out at this point yep. or keep it for a display piece. So if it worked past a year, who cares? But putting that issue aside, uh, and I have had SSDs fail. But it's extremely rare. It is. Um, the most recent SSD that I had fail was an ADATA SX6000 Lite. And that was a one terabyte drive. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But that's not where, I mean, yeah. that was a very low end cheap drive and it just finally stopped being recognized by the PC. It but did. it's it very, does. I've had more SSD failures in the past five years, knock on wood, than hard drive failures. Mm hmm. So, TLC is still superior to QLC. That has not changed. However, most people won't care. It's interesting because quite literally today, before we started this, I tested, I benchmarked the two SSDs that are on my laptop here. Yep, he did. I have a 500 gig Samsung 960 Evo. That is a TLC premium DRAM cache, very nice SSD as the boot drive in this machine. And the secondary drive is a two terabyte Intel 660p QLC drive. Now, while that is DRAM buffered, it's quarter DRAM. It only has 512 megabytes of DRAM, yep. whereas normally two terabyte drives have two gigabytes of DRAM. And so it's like half DRAM buffered. Yes. 1K thread, uh, 4K testing, Q depth of one, thread count of one, the 660P was faster than the 960 EVO. Why is that? There's a couple possibilities. Cash? Uh, no. Um, the 660P is empty and the 960 oh, EVO is not. That's true. The 660P is a data drive that I actually have nothing in it at the moment because I'm using it for live streams and recording stuff, so I really don't use it much. The, 660, the, the Samsung 960 EVO is the boot drive and it has files on it. I don't know mm -hmm. what the lane configuration is on this laptop for the two slots. Mm, that's true. If I had thought to look it up before we had this conversation, I could tell you. That's because true. if I pulled up Crystal Disk Info, um, it'll actually tell you how many lanes that you're using. Oh. Don't judge me. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have something to say? I got nothing to say. I'm just sitting over here. <laughs> oh, that's interesting. It doesn't show the transfer mode. Why is that? Laptop, obviously. Do you get a click zone? Normally. Yeah, normally. Normally it does. 
That's interesting. In, should I show them? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Why well, you find this funny, don't you? <laughs> it's eye candy. You gotta, gotta get yourself some eye candy. So this is the 960 Evo one no. uh, 500 gig drive. You got it wrong. It's the Samsung 960 Evo 500 gigabyte. <laughs> so I wish I could do that better. You did that very well. So normally in transfer mode, it would tell you not only what PCI Express mode, but it would tell you how many lanes, two lanes, four lanes, etc. And then here is the Intel 660P. And again, it would say the transfer mode. Maybe it's because it's a laptop, it doesn't show it. Mm -hmm. But normally it, it would. In fact, you can see the 100% life here. I have written very, very little to this drive. Whereas my 960 Evo has 98% life remaining. In any case, Since we're here, since we're here, I saved the two images. You did. So, you gonna show? I'm working on it. I'm trying. There we go. And let me zoom them in. Let me zoom in. Oh, that's not what I'm trying to do. There we go. So this was the Samsung 960 Evo 500 gig drive. Now, read speed's great. Light speed was a little bit slow. This is the number that I'm most interested in. Q depth of one, thread count of one, random 4K. This is the actual performance of the drive that most people are going to experience. What, what should it be? That's a little thin for a 960 Evo, but maybe for a 500 gig drive, it's not terrible. The larger the drive, sometimes the better the number. And of course, this drive's a few years old. The 970 Evo was a newer drive, and then the 970 yeah. Evo Plus. Uh -huh. Now, the write speed is much better. You notice the uh, random 4K Q depth of one, thread count of one is 101 megabytes per second. Mm -hmm. That's because there's on drive uh, SLC cache that is buffering the inbound writes what? and reordering them. I said them. cache, so. Well, but they both have cash. That's true. So the Intel 660P did 54 on the read. Hmm. That's not double, but it's more than 50% faster. Yep. About the same on the right. Yep. And this is a QLC drive. However, it... eight megabytes of data on an empty drive. Mm. It's going to be pretty fast on that. If this drive were full, if you were doing a larger data set, it might not be quite as good. Notice the read speed is half the speed of the, six, of the sequential. Mm -hmm. People love to look at sequential numbers and they get all excited about yes. seven gigs per second on a Gen 4 drive. It doesn't mean anything. Um, what really matters is that Q depth of one, thread count of one. one. I imagine Chet right now is laughing the butts off. Maybe not. Oh, oh, you mean for the for the for your for yes the type of crystal disc mark? Oh yes. So to answer the point, QLC doesn't matter until it does. The heavier the writing, the more writing that you do, the more QLC will matter. You can write extended to the TLC drive and it will maintain solid performance. Mm -hmm. It will drop when it's SLC cache overruns, mm -hmm. but it will maintain relatively good performance. That 660p, if you try to do a full drive write, will drop to 100 megabytes a second, even in sequential. Okay. Literally 100, slower than a hard drive. Mm. However, you have to be doing a lot of writing to overrun the SLC cache. Yeah. Read speeds don't care. TLC to QLC don't really matter with read speeds. But I am surprised that it was beating the the 960 Evo because the Samsung drives are really good. Yeah, yeah. I have a 660p in several older machines, and I find no reason to take them out because unless you have a state of the art machine, it's really a good drive because it at least has that quarter DRAM cache. Yeah. And as far as warranty goes, if it lasts a week, 
probably last forever. And if it fails, it's probably not worth fussing with. Quality. SSDs have become so cheap, I find no reason to buy anything but name brand and the best. Yeah, exactly. You buy a 970 Evo Plus, you buy a 980 Pro or 990 Pro, you buy a Western Digital SN850X, you buy a Silicon Power XS70, you buy a Acer Predator GM7000, you buy... Um, Oh, what else is there? Those next storage drives are really good because they're actually made by Fison, who makes the controllers. Who am I forgetting? Silicon Power. Team Group. Team Group. I mentioned Silicon Power. Team Group MP34s tend to be a really good deal. Those are Gen 3 drives. MP44s are the the Gen 4 version. Um, They typically haven't been the best value per, per terabyte. That's kind of it. Skip everything else. I wouldn't, I wouldn't bother with most of it anymore. A year ago, I really loved the Levin, L-E-V-E-N drives oh, on Amazon. They cheap yep. Chinese drives. The four terabyte SATA drives hit 200 bucks a year ago. I was like, whoa, that's so cheap. Except on Black Friday, you could get a four terabyte Gen 4 premium seven gig per second um, Acer Predator GM7000 drive, DRAM buffered, okay. super top performance for $185. The conversation's over. Yep. Why would you buy junk or- when they're that cheap? Now, somebody might say, $185 is a lot of money. Yeah, but the Levin drives, which are SATA, QLC, DRAMless garbage, relatively speaking. I mean, they're not garbage. I own two of them extremely cheap they're 150. if they were half the price i I would i'd be fine with it yeah it's 30 it was 35 dollars why are we having the conversation over 35 dollars 150 for sata qlc dramless no name versus 185 for gen 4 premium dram buffered tlc the good stuff. The conversation's over. Yes, it is. Name brand drives are now cheap enough. Premium drives are now cheap enough. There's no reason to buy cheap drives. I don't oppose using them. I have a 660p in my laptop. I'm not taking it out. Why? It's there. You know how much trouble it is to take the bottom of this I thing do. off? I've watched you do it. What else do you want to add to the SSDs? I think it comes down to use case. If you're just storing stuff and you don't need to write to it and you don't need to update, then not having the DRAM cache is fine. But if you're having to update games, if you're having to rewrite stuff and having to wait for that, then getting the better drive is totally worth it. Because I remember <clears throat> when I was streaming on my 3700X, we had a DRAMless SSD on there and I had to wait days. Windows days. update was... Windows update, the game update. I mean... World every, of Warships. Everything about it was just slow, so... When you overran your SLC cache, your QLC drive was garbage. So I had to plan, if I was going to stream, I had to make sure that the game was updated because with World of Warships, they do update their game quite often. So I had to become very familiar when they were updating the game so that the computer was ready because... If I was ready to stream and the game needed an update, I wasn't going live for a while. And then just getting files and, oh. Do just, you appreciate that you don't horrible. have that problem anymore? Yes. So Do you now have all premium drives? All premium drives. Look at his split. I can... Everything's quick. I don't have to worry about it now. And they've now dropped in price. I've done a lot of videos on budget drives, QLC drives. I did an entire dedicated video on the Intel 660p. There was a time when it was my number one recommendation because price to performance relative to what the other options were, the two terabyte of that was half the price of like a Samsung 970 Evo two terabyte drive. Mm. Well, I can deal with some problems at half the price, but when they're 20 bucks apart. No, dad, yeah. What? The Samsung 970 Evo Plus 
is one of, if not the best Gen 3 NVMEs ever made and probably will ever be made. The one terabyte version of that on Black Friday was $49. $49, bucks. oh my gosh. The two terabyte version was $79. There's nothing more to say. Mm -mm. As we record this, I'm seeing comments going, well, what about this? What about that? What about Lexar? What about this? What about what? Yeah. At these prices, I there's nothing to talk about. This is like, do you want to buy... Do you want to buy the Honda Civic for $30,000 or the Lamborghini for $33,000? Okay, maybe Lamborghini doesn't have enough trunk space for you, but you get my point. Where am I going to put my golf clubs? <sighs> I was trying to come up with an analogy. Oh. The, okay, do you want to fly coach across the United States for $1,000? Yes. Or do you want to fly first class across the United States for 1050 Would you pay 50 I bucks? I would take 1050 for Would that. you pay 50 bucks on a $1,000 ticket to upgrade from coach Heck to first yeah, class on a seven-hour flight? So would everybody else. That's what premium drives are today. Yeah, no, I, I understand it. This I, is this is this is a silly conversation. I know. Now, Mike asked a question, and I just want to say, Mike, thank you very much for the question. This was there's maybe one of the reasons it's not discussed anymore is the price gaps close to the point to where everybody just, gets premium. Just buy the good stuff. That doesn't mean you have to throw out the old ones, but you certainly shouldn't be buying them. Yeah. Thank you very much for the support. Looking for a Windows 10 or 11 product key, but you don't want to spend $100 to $200 for it? Our sponsor, URCD Keys, provides discounted Windows keys at amazing prices. $15 for Windows 10 Professional, $21 for Windows 11 Professional, and just $60 for Microsoft Office 2021 Professional Plus. These product keys are the real deal. They activate directly with Microsoft Online, link to your Microsoft account, and they work forever. For Windows, you simply go to Settings, Update and Security, Activation, click Change Product Key, paste the key provided by URCD Keys, and in seconds, you're activated with Microsoft. For Office, go to setup.office.com, sign in with your Microsoft account, paste the product key provided by URCD Keys, and then download Office 2021 Pro Plus directly from Microsoft. Remember to use the discount code TD20 to save 25% off the already deeply discounted prices and support our channel at the same time. We have been using product keys from URCD Keys for almost five years now without any issues and encourage you to do so as well.